This is a picture of me. Um, I'm actually standing on the top of Hill Tower 2 in Regina. It's a 22-story building. Um, what this was, it was a fundraiser for the Saskatchewan Abilities Council where you raise money and you rappel down the building. <laughs> that was my most recent accomplishment I did for fun. Um, I was asked to talk to you today about my experience. Um, I want to talk about my experience on how I coped with my disability in the university and in the work field. Um, I am a, still a part-time student at the University of Regina and I work part-time at the Canadian Cancer Society. And I'm a companion service provider at a long-term health facility. And what I do there is I just provide friendship to those who don't leave the building all that often. This past April, I received my degree in social work, and this April, I will receive a health studies degree through the kinesiology faculty. In 2005, I was diagnosed with dyslexia, and how that finally came about was I was taking a mandatory research class, and I was struggling with the theory of the class, and a French-speaking professor at my university had noticed that I was having more problems with the English language than he was. And he was a very supportive professor, and he had suggested possibly going for testing. So I went for the assessment, and it turned out that I have dyslexia. And when I received that diagnosis, um, it was a relief because for the first time in my life was all of a sudden everything made sense. I was able to understand why I was having so many difficulties in school in every subject. So it was a blessing that I had to take that class. Here's just a, an example of some of the challenges I face. Um, in reading, I found that reading does take a, a lot longer. Um, word accuracy and recognition and pronunciation of words has, was a huge difficulty, along with comprehension of what I was reading and what I was hearing, which made sense to why I really never did well on exams in school. And a lot of the written problems that I had throughout school were also identified. And along with that goes with the verbal. A lot of word finding difficulties, um, mixing up words and ideas and explaining a variety of different things I was asked to explain either on exams or orally. I have an example of um, how I sometimes jumble up words while I'm speaking. And this is also an example of how I read. Um, Spood Beast. What this is, is I was explaining to a friend at my house how you play Mario Kart on the Wii. And I was trying to explain to her the different ways of going faster. And I said, just use your Spood Beast. And she didn't understand what I was saying and she kept laughing. She knows about my disability, so it was fine. And I couldn't understand why she was laughing, and she kept re repeating it. What is a spood beast? And finally, she said, I think something's wrong. What I meant to say to her was use your speed boost. And that was just sort of an example of how I jumble up words while I speak and while I read, why when I'm reading textbooks or policies for our office, I don't understand what they're saying or what they're reading and when I'm trying to explain things back to my supervisor about what I read or to a prof, it's not accurate at all. Um, so some of the strategies that I've used to help me 
become successful are I've gained the support from a variety of different people. I have the support of the Disability Office at the University of Regina. They provide me with the accommodations and any of the support I may run into if professors will not um, abide by the accommodations. I've also been learning how to advocate for my own needs and what works for me. Um, a lot of my professors, when they're given the accommodations, they ask what the disability is about just so that they understand what my difficulties are and how they can teach so that I understand. Um, I receive a lot of support in the workplace from my supervisor and which has been helpful. I also do get a lot of assistance which has been very helpful from EAPD in Regina which has made it very helpful to become successful. Um, disclosure for me was very important um, in the workplace and at the university when I'm dealing with profs as learning is a challenge but it can be overcome with the right accommodations. For me it was really important to learn about my disability. I needed to learn um, the strengths and weaknesses and how I can enhance how, can I, how I can use my strengths to build on my weaknesses. Um, I also had to learn a personal learning style, which is very exhausting, but I have to write out a lot of words to learn them or rewrite policies to understand them or um, talk to a lot of people to see if I'm understanding things right. I also take classes part-time just so that I have the extra time without the pressure to succeed in my classes. Organization is also very important to me. Um, I need to use color-coded notes because the black and white contrast makes words jump around on the pages and makes words even blend in a little bit more. Um, typing notes is a lot easier for me. A, very, a quiet workplace is absolutely essential for me because I can't learn with any distractions or um, movement or anything is too distracting for me, which makes things very confusing. My experience in my practicum, I had to do a practicum for my social work degree, and I chose my placement. I chose the Canadian Cancer Society as I have an interest in working in the cancer field. Um, it was important to have an understanding of the disability and I needed to learn how to identify that to the supervisor so that I could succeed there. Um, the one thing that our office was really good about was the confidential confidentiality was respected. Um, my disability was never talked about and nobody ever questioned me about it but Throughout the semester, the supervisor would come up and ask how things were working and if things needed to be changed. So I felt very comfortable and accepted in the workplace. I found that by providing my accommodations created success in my workplace. I did require more time and a lot more effort on my behalf in order to comprehend the information and the policies. I was able to work effectively with the accommodations provided. I used my WIN software to assist me with the reading and naturally dragon speaking to aid me in all of the written work. How I developed my career goals was by taking a variety of university classes just to see what I was interested in, which led me to the faculty of social work. I had taken a variety of health classes and began to volunteer within the health field. I developed an interest in the oncology field, which also led me to a new degree program at the University of Regina, which was the health studies program, which provided me more information about the healthcare system. I did my practicum for social work in the oncology field, which is also leading me to my future goals of working within pediatric oncology. 
Um, just a few suggestions I have for those just beginning their career development is explore your career employment options. Identify what your values and skills and strengths are. Learn about the office or agency before going for the interview. Explore the workplace environment to determine if it will suit your needs. Now that I've learned to cope with my dyslexia, I can successfully overcome obstacles in achieving my goals working within the pediatric oncology field. And there was a quote that actually one of the professors had given me. Um, success, is, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you'll be successful. <laughs>